joining me now to uh, to talk about another measure that addresses an emerging threat when it comes to the issue of of life and the health of mothers and babies is uh, Congressman Bob Lada. He represents the 5th Congressional District of Ohio. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Tony, thanks very much for having me on, and thank you for all that you do. Well, I appreciate that, Bob. Thanks so much. You are addressing an issue that is under the radar for many, and that is while we've seen a decline in the number of abortions that have been conducted at abortion clinics, because abortion clinics are closing, uh, they're losing ground, but they have made a tactical shift in using abortion drugs, chemical abortions, and they're looking to try to loosen the laws and regulations around them. And this is putting women at risk, is it not? Oh, absolutely. Because uh, what we've seen is an increase in chemical abortions across the country. They were first uh, approved back in 2000. And uh, they think right now that with them, the number is about 39 percent of the abortions now since uh, 2017 are chemical. And there's a higher uh, complication rate because women don't know exactly uh, sometimes ex- what, uh, when to take this, these two pills. And there's more, of, uh, more emergency room visits that uh, occur because of it. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really uh, uh, frightening what we've seen happening out there because, of course, the pro-abortion uh, groups out there are really pushing for this. They have abortion on demand. And, you know, you know they're self, self-managed without any physical or physician oversight. And uh, so it's, it's dangerous. Now, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me stop you. I want, I want to make sure people understand what you just said. These... Uh, Death-inducing drugs, this chemical abortion, this has been being given to women without ever even seeing a doctor. Is that right? Well, correct. And and that's the the, uh, scary thing, because what the uh, pro-choice side out there is trying to do is, again, have these drugs out there and, uh, you know, through the mail, the Internet, you name it, and through telemedicine and, uh, you know, never seeing a patient. They want, and uh, what we want to make sure is, especially in our legislation, is that uh, you know that the that we don't have this change of uh, labeling on these drugs, and that's what they call the REMS, which is a risk evaluation mitigation strategy right. uh, for these approved drugs, and you know, and the, the dispensing of these drugs remotely, because again, uh, you know, you don't know who's getting it, who's taking it, and how it's being administered. And so when you look at the dispensing, the labeling, and not approving any more of these drugs, because right now FDA is out there uh, and approved clinical trials on teleabortion. And, uh, you know, no doctors, no, no ultrasound, no nothing. And that's incredibly dangerous for women. Well, th- this goes back to a conversation we had on went all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, the law out of Louisiana I actually authored the first uh, version of this back when I was in the legislature on the Abortion Clinic Regulation Act that required these clinics to have a relationship with local hospitals. The whole reason being that if a woman had complications after an abortion, they would r- be able to readily access uh, their, their records, know what had happened to her. In this case, what you're talking talking about is that this this abortion inducing drug could come through or this abortion drug could come through the mail be dispensed remotely if there's complications how is that hospital that she this emergency room she shows up in how will they even know anything about what she has been given yeah and that's why we're seeing such an increase in um, emergency room visits because there you don't have it uh, otherwise, uh, when you don't have that oversight and when you don't see a patient. And uh, so, you know, th- th- this is why we're, uh, we believe that we've got to move forward on this legislation where we've been working on it. We, and I'm confident, you know, we will get it done, but uh, it might not uh, be as fast as we want because, of, unfortunately, with the Democrats controlling the White House in both chambers and Congress. But we have got to keep working because of what uh, the, the, what these drugs do. And, you know, if you take off the um, you know, these groups want to take off this REMS or this risk evaluation mitigation on these uh, off the even off the label. It's just like, wait a minute, uh, you know, uh, how do you know how dangerous it is if you, you get this thing and you, you and you uh, don't know what you're really doing except thinking, well, it must be okay. 
And, uh, you know, one of the great uh, things that through the pro-life movement, we've seen the number of abortions going down in this country. But I think it's always important, you know, the stress that you've got to put, uh, you just don't look at a number, but, you know, in 2017, the number of abortions performed in this country would take out every resident of South Dakota. And when we see these chemical abortions going up, uh, and the, and uh, the percentages and and again that the what the other side wants is oh we don't want you don't even have to see a doctor and uh, you don't know who that patient is and you know to get just a simple prescription you know doctors want to see because they want to write something out there uh, for just a for some kind of a cold medicine maybe but here we are talking about taking a life. And uh, somebody getting this through the mail or or through telemedicine, which is absolutely wrong. You know, it always amazes me, Bob, just how much influence and control the abortion industry has over our policy uh, in this country. It is uh, and, and it's clearly one party. Uh, They have so much influence over the Democratic Party. It is uh, it is shocking. Well, and it is. It's, it's pretty much a one-sided uh, uh, group out there, and who they who they turn to. But you know, when we introduced the legislation the other day, yesterday, in fact, that we had uh, 72 original co-sponsors on the, the legislation. So when you think there's 435 members in the House to have 72 original co-sponsors just to get started, that's a tremendous number. It just shows that that we're that we do have a huge pro-life. Uh, caucus in the House of Representatives. Any chance of getting uh, Democratic support for this? You know, it's tough because, you know, when you look at the other side uh, right now, uh, there are very few of they used to call blue dog Democrats right. left. And uh, they're, they're pretty much controlled by the, you know, the liberal socialists then now. And uh, so it's it's tough. There's, a, there's a, You know, there might be a few out there, but uh, unfortunately, like Dan Lipinski, who was from Illinois and right. Chicago area, was defeated in the primary uh, in the last uh, Congress. And uh, he was one of the very few, you know, of those, and that's why he was defeated. He was, he was targeted by his own party because of his pro-life stand. He, 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 that's correct, because it was, and I, I know him very well. Yeah. And, you know, maybe Dan and I didn't uh, agree on about 95 percent of other pieces of legislation, but when it came to pro-life, he was solid. Yeah. But the, the left came, went out and they said, we're getting rid of him. And unfortunately, they took him out. Well, I appreciate the stand that you are taking, uh, Congressman Bob Lotta, and we encourage you to continue to do that. And uh, I welcome you back anytime to talk about those issues here on Washington Watch. Well, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. 